What's up, Nerd Sean Bestie? Welcome to Math Bootcamp with Mr. Chang. It's -a me. In this video, we're going to focus on inequality equation calculation. Let's get started. There's only a couple things you need to know and learn about inequality equation calculation. First, they're very similar to equation with one variable. The only difference is, is the sign is a little different. The only other rule you need to know is, is every time you, when you divide or multiply by a negative number, your sign need to get flipped around. I'll show you what that means later on. So let's do some practice together. We have x plus 6 smaller than 12. When you want to balance the equation, you do the exact the opposite on both sides to isolate x. So in this case, we minus 6 on both sides. So the 6 here on the left will cancel each other out. What we have left is equal to 6 smaller than 12 minus 6 is equal to 6. And that will be your final answer. That's it. So let's try another one. We have minus 4x larger than 20. So what do we need to do? We need to isolate x by divided negative 4 on both sides. Remember Mr. Chang just said? Anytime you multiply or divide with a negative number, your sign need to change. So the first big thing is make sure the sign got changed, right? Next thing, negative 4 get divided, so that get cancel out. What we have left is x right here. And again, on the other side, we got 20 divided by negative 4. So a positive number divided by a negative number equal to what? A negative number, right? So we know that first thing first. Make sure we put the negative sign. And 20 divided by 4 equal to 5. And since we already changed the sign, we're good there. So the final answer to this question will be x is smaller than negative 5. Just like that. Super easy, right? So let's do a couple more practice questions. So now we have x over 3 larger or equal to 9. What do we need to do here to isolate x? We need to multiply 3 on both sides, right? So this 3 on the left will get canceled out. x will get isolated larger or equal to 9 multiplied by 3 equal to 27. So next question, we have negative 3y over 4 smaller or equal to 11. So let's isolate them one by one, right? So the first step, we can multiply 4 on both sides. So if the 4 as a denominator will get canceled out, what we have left? Negative 3y is smaller or equal to 11 multiplied by 4 equal to 44. Okay, so now the next step, right? We need to divide negative 3 on both sides so we can isolate the y. And since we divide with a negative number, right? Make sure we flip that sign first. And then the y will get isolated. On the other side will be 44 divided by negative 3. And that's not the final answer, right? We know that this is an improper fraction. We need them to be a mixed fraction to be the most simplest form as the answer. So how do we do that? We put 44 in the middle of the divide, 3 on the outside. So let's divide them, right? So we know that, let's look at the first unit, 4 and 3. We know that we can divide it one time. So we put a 3 here, minus. So now we have 14, right? We put those numbers down. And then we know that 3 multiplied by 4 equal to 12, smaller than 14. We have 2 left. This is your whole number, all right? This is your numerator, and then this is your denominator number. So we just need to copy those back, right? So y will be larger or equal to, make sure you copy the negative, 14 over 2 over 3. And that would be your final answer for this question. The next question, 5x minus 7 smaller or equal to 18. So the first step, right? We need to do the opposite on anything that is not connected to the x. So we have minus 7, so we know that we need to plus 7 on both sides. So we, what we have left, we got 5x left, smaller or equal to 18 plus 7, equal to 25. Next step, right? Isolate the x, so we know that we can divide a 5 on both sides. We have, yes, x is smaller or equal to 5. Let's try the next one. 7 minus 2x bigger than 1. So what do we do? We know that we can minus 7 on both sides. So we will have minus 2x larger than 1 minus 7 equal to minus 6. All right. So now let's isolate the x, right? We can divide it by negative 2 on both sides, right? So the first thing, make sure every time you write down divide by a negative number or multiply by a negative number, flip the sign first so you don't forget, right? So now let's isolate them, right? Divide it to minus 2 on the left so they will cancel each other out. We left with x. So minus 6 divided by minus 2. Negative rule, right? Two negative number multiply or divide together, it become what? A positive number. So let's write the sign up so we don't forget or we don't get confused. 
So the last one, last step, right? Six divided by two is equal to three. So your final answer is just x is smaller than three. Next question. We have three x plus eight larger or equal to two x minus five. First thing, we can minus eight on both sides. So what we have left, we got three x larger or equal to two x minus five minus eight equal to minus 13. Next up, we have what? We can minus 2x on both sides. So we're moving the x, right, all together. So we will have 3x minus 2x equal to 1x larger or equal to minus 13. And since 1x is just equal to 1, we know that the final answer is just x is larger or equal to negative 13. Nothing changed. Let's try another one. x minus 4 over 5 larger than 2. So what do we do first? We can, since we know that this is over 5, it's just equal to divided by 5. We can multiply 5 on both sides. We will have x minus 4 on one side, larger than, and then what? 2 multiplied by 5 equal to 10, right? We already seen the last step. We can plus 4 on both sides, right? So what we have left, x is larger than 14, just like that. So on inequality equation calculation, not only we need to know how to do the calculation part, we also need to set it up as a word problems. So here's a word problems example. A store must sell at least $1,500 worth of goods each week to break even. If each item sell for $75, how many items must they sell per week? So we know that first thing, right? The store must sell at least. What does at least mean? At least mean on the keyword at least is bigger or equal to. This right here, this sign is equal to at least, okay? And what we have, it got to be more than, right, $1,500. So now when each item, the item that we need to find, let's put that as X, right? And then we know that every item we got is $75. So the equation we set up as 75X got to be larger or equal to, break even, right? Larger or equal to $1,500, right? So now once this equation is set up, all we need to do is a little handy dandy calculation, right? So isolate x, how do we do that? We divide 75 on both sides. What we have is x got isolated, got to be larger or equal to 1,500 divided by 75 is equal to 20. So x got to be more than or equal to 20 items per week for them to break even. Let's try another practice question. Let's see how they set up. On this question, a ride share driver need to earn more than 800 per week if they charge $40 per trip. How many trips must they complete weekly? So now this time, all we have is more than, right? What is the more than sign looks like? More than sign is just that. Don't have the equal sign underneath. So this sign is more than. And what we need to do more than? More than 800. So we know that the 800 will be on the small end on the side. We got X amount of trip. And we know that each trip is $40. So now we got the equation set up. All we need to do is do some little calculation and isolate x, right? So how do we do that? We can divide 40 on both sides. We have x is more than 800 divided by 40 equal to 20 again. So we know that the driver must do more than 20 trip for them to make more than $800. So our next question, an EMT base play is $22 per hour for the first 40 hours and time and a half after that. Their total pay for the week must be less than $1,100. How many total hours can they work without exceeding the limit? So we know that the first thing, right, is got to be less than $1,100. So la now let's look at their base pays, right? Their base pay is 22 multiplied by 40. That's their base pay. So we want to double check their base pay for the first 40 hours do not exceed $1,100, right? So let's double check. 22 multiplied by 40 is equal to 880. So we're good there, right? Because the base pay is still less than $1,100. So we know that we need to add over time, right? The time and a half part. So we know that the equation will get added, right? What is time and a half? So 22 time and a half. We know that that is 1.5 and multiply by what? How many hours, right? So we know that we need to have X right there. So let's do a step by step, right? 22 multiplied by 1.5 is equal to 33 X, right? So we know that that need to be added with the base pay still need to be less than $1,100. So now we got this equation set up. We just need some basic calculation, right? 
So first thing, we can minus 880 on both sides. So we have 33x need to be smaller than 1,100 minus 880 is equal to 220. Then isolate x, right? So we can divide the 33 on both sides. So we have left this x need to be smaller. 220 divided by 33 is equal to 6.666. Let's round it up to 7. Because technically it's 6 infinity, so we round it up on the thousands unit. So now, how many total hours can they work without exceeding the limit? So we know that x got to be what? Less than 6.6667, but that's not including base pace, right? So we need to add the base pace back in the end to get the final answer. So make sure we add the 40 at the end, because that 40 hours technically is already worked. So what does that mean? It means that the total hours, the EMT cannot work more than, yes, 46 point six 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 seven hours or depends on how the answer key you know, want you to round up or round down and here is the final cheat sheet for inequality and inequality calculation so all these right here is the keyword that you need to know to identify what kind of sign you need to be using on your equation and the last thing you need to know is every time you multiply or divide by a negative number you need to flip the inequality sign Okay, and that's everything you need to know when it's come to inequality equation calculation. And as always, if you have any other question, make sure to leave it down below. We love answering your questions. Head over to nursechangstore.com where there's a tons of additional resources to help you feel more confident with your ATIT exam. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.